When people die, they may not be completely gone. There are times where spirits are left behind, bound to a place. I hope you're ready, because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Around the time I was a sophomore in college, my parents decided to tear down our house and rebuild, seeing as a lot of people in our neighborhood were doing the same for value purposes. I had made multiple jokes about how cool it would be to get a secret room that no one knew about, but didn't actually expect them to take adding it into consideration. Turns out, they worked with the contractor and ended up having an area set aside. Basically, if you're looking inside my closet and turned right, you could walk to the corner where there was a 1.5 foot bar to hang clothes. If you moved these clothes, there was a wall behind that that you could push open and bam, the hidden room. Fully equipped with ceiling lights and electric plugs. Imagine how many games of hide and seek I won. No one ever found me. The room was my precious secret and I wasn't going to share it with any person outside my family. Unfortunately, after a few months passed, I began to get tired of the room. First of all, trying to squeeze past all of the clothes proved to be a pain. Then I'd have to slide through the tiny space to get to the room, which wasn't all that big itself. The magic had worn off, so I stopped entertaining it. Fast forward a couple of months later, when things had began to get weird. Our family had left for vacation two weeks earlier, so we had one of our neighbours take care of the house. We had been having a lot of crime in the area, so she occasionally stopped by to just check. When I had gotten home, I was exhausted and wanted nothing more than to crawl into bed. Opening the door to my room, which was dark, I noticed that something was off. I could see a faint glow coming from underneath my closet door. Okay, I thought to myself. My neighbour must have been going through my stuff. So I walk over to turn off the light, only to realise that the closet light switch was facing down. Confused, I open the door, and to my horror, I notice, in the corner, all of my clothes had been shoved aside so the wall to my secret room had been pushed open, and that light was on. How was it possible? No one knew of that room other than my parents and the contractor. I stood there in utter disbelief for about a minute, until I realised that my neighbour must have really explored the place. I warily made my way to turn off the light, followed by putting the wall door back in its place and moving the clothes back to their normal formation. I'm going to try and explain what happened next as best I can. Still kind of freaked out, or at least confused, I start to exit my closet. I'm standing in its frame looking across my room into the corner, where I have an iron floor mirror. I'm looking at the reflection when I notice that the closet space behind me suddenly lights up and I hear this scraping noise, or at least I think that's what it was. My heart had been pounding so hard that my ears could only hear the rush of blood with every beat. I remember jerking my head back inside my closet to find that all of my clothes moved aside and the wall was pushed open and you guessed it. The light to the secret room was on. Once I was able to move from my petrified state, I convinced myself that I had been so confused when I had initially seen the secret room open that I had not closed it back at all, but I knew that I was lying to myself. Throughout the next few months, strange events kept happening. There weren't anything major, but still, 
way to the point that I couldn't explain them. For example, I would walk into my bathroom only to find that my toilet seat was being left up. Every single time. I was assuming my dad was coming into my room to use it, but that would mean he had a serious case of an overactive bladder. When I approached him about it, he looked at me as though I were crazy and asked me why he would use my bathroom when we had one down the hall. I couldn't answer that question. There were other instances where I would wake up in the morning only to find that on multiple occasions, my closet door was wide open. Before any of you say that it's not a big deal, let me clarify that I had been slightly terrified of my closet and made sure every night that the door was closed before I went to sleep. I would check to make sure I heard the click and pull back and forth a few times to prove it had been shut all the way. There was no reason it should be wide open and there was also no way to explain why, occasionally, the light was turned on in the middle of the night. I know, I know, malfunctioning lights and toilet seats don't come off as scary, but bear with me. I was freaked out to the point that I finally approached my mum about it, when we were both working in our downstairs office one day. Here's a bit of background on her. She doesn't believe in ghosts whatsoever. In fact, she raised me and my older brother, who had been moved out since we lived in the new house, to think that any person who believed in ghosts was crazy. So when I tell her of my superstitions, I'm surprised when she sighs and says that she's noticed weird things have happened too. She continued to tell me how when we first moved into the house, the one that we tore down, she would always hear footsteps walking around in my brother's bedroom. This would confuse her because he was at school every time this happened but she could have sworn she heard him running around. One time, when she had walked up, toys were spalled across this carpet. This took her by surprise, because he had never left his room like this before heading out. She then went on to explain that the previous owners of the house had a young son that died in my brother's room, which is what led them to sell the house, which he never told me about before. I'm guessing she had thought I was old enough to know now, and not for many irrational stories about ghosts or our haunted house. If that had been her goal, I hate to inform her that it absolutely did not work. At this point, I was now positive that our house was haunted. She wrapped up her story and laughed it off though. It's silly to believe that there wasn't a logical explanation to weird things happening. The footsteps coming from the old house was because it was old. The lighting and the toilet issues were stemming from the fact that the house was brand new. Yeah, okay. At that point, we swiveled around in our office chairs and continued working on our computers. After a minute or so, I could hear this sound, almost white noise. I turned to my mum, thinking she was taking a break and watching some weird video when I notice she's looking at me with the same confused face. It sounds like your shower's running, she said. My bedroom and bathroom were directly above our heads. Our dazed expression stemmed from the fact that my shower hadn't worked for a good month or so, as a new house comes with many problems. Right as she said that, the water had stopped running and things went silent, right before we heard five loud footsteps. I remember seeing my mum turn white and immediately bolt upstairs past my dad who was sitting on the couch watching TV. I finally joined her only to find that she was looking in my closet, under my bed, everywhere. She had tried to explain to my dad what she had heard but he insisted it was some piping issue and she eventually believed him. There was no way that was piping. I just kind of stayed upstairs, accepting the fact that something weird, but probably harmless, was occupying my room. Oh, and, as I was thinking about everything that had happened, I realised that my current room is exactly where my brother's room used to be. 
I know that's not how hauntings work exactly, but it makes for a better explanation at least. I was about 12 years old and staying at my grandparents' house after my aunt's wedding. The house itself wasn't very big and was the same house that my mother and her brothers and sisters lived in growing up. After the wedding reception was over, my mum wanted to take me back to my grandparents for the night, so all of the aunts could go out and get a couple more drinks. When we arrived at the house, my mother and I both could very faintly hear a baby crying, with a woman talking, trying to comfort the baby. Now this house isn't very big, so you can hear pretty much any noise in any point of the house. Our initial thoughts were that someone forgot to turn off the TVs in the house. So we both walked around the house, trying to find the TVs that were left on. To our surprise, not a single TV or radio was left on, but the volume of the woman and the baby remained constant. It didn't matter which room we were in. If we were in the basement or the landing, the volume of the lady and the baby was always the same. This, of course, scared the shit out of me, as I never believed in ghosts before this happened, but there was no other explanation for it. Now, my mother was a little freaked out as well, but she had a bar to get to, and she then just told me that it was nothing, got in her car, and left me alone in the ghost house. I immediately switched on the TV, with the volume as highest as it could go, without blasting out my eardrums. I was exhausted, but drank pop to not let my body fall asleep and give this thing an opportunity to attack me whilst I was asleep. My parents showed up a couple of hours later to a kid, all wired on sugar, just staring at the TV screen. I later told my aunt who grew up in that house the story and she was ecstatic. She had always claimed that she heard a woman and the baby in the house growing up, but nobody believed her. Ever since that day, I believe that something like ghosts exists to some degree. It doesn't matter how much evidence or data that people show me claiming they don't exist. I know what I heard, and it gives me chills just thinking about it. At least mine was pretty nice, and didn't break glass and other shit like some of the stories. Around three or four years ago, my family was looking to buy a house. We ended up touring a house in a very secluded neighborhood. It was a brightly colored house and it was very old. It was two stories and very pleasant to look at. The realtors took us inside and instantly I got a creepy vibe from the house. It had a long front hall that led into the living room. However, when you first walked in, if you looked to your right, there was this huge staircase with an actual Harry Potter looking room underneath it. The downstairs furniture was very old and nothing, and I mean nothing matched. When we went upstairs, the house had Jack and Jill rooms, meaning they looked exactly alike. It was creepy as hell. Me, having anxiety-induced paranoia, asked the realtor if in the state of Tennessee, they had to tell you if somebody died in the house you were looking or even buying. When my family heard that, my father made us all get into the car and leave. One thing that made it even creepier was that the realtor looked pissed when I first asked that question. I looked online and found that the house had been up for sale 15 times in the past five years. I also found out that in the 80s, after it was built, the first couple that lived there were brutally murdered. The wife was found upstairs in the crawl space connecting the bedrooms, and the husband was found in the little Harry Potter closet, which I sat inside for about 10 to 15 minutes, 
while I listened to the realtor talking about the living room. I still get the creeps when I think about the fact that I sat in the exact same spot they found a dead man about 35 years before. I was stationed in Erlangen, Germany, between 1990 and 1993, but lived off post in Nuremberg. I lived in a condominium on Dusseldorf Street with my then wife and two daughters. My oldest daughter was three years old at the time and would often come running into our bedroom crying and complaining of a monkey in her bedroom. She didn't have any toys of monkeys or apes, so it was kind of baffling to understand her or her fear. Their bedroom and ours were across from each other between the hallway and we could see directly into their bedroom from ours. One late night, sitting up in bed, reading, I caught movement out of my right side. Thinking one of my kids may be up, I walked into their room, but they were both asleep. I go back to my bed and book, and again, I noticed movement. So I glanced over to their room from my bed, and that's when I saw what appeared to be the outline of a child as it walked in the bedroom where my daughters were sleeping. I launched out of my bed and covered the distance between my rooms and theirs in maybe four leaps. Nothing. My daughters were both sleeping. This was mid-tour for me, so for the remaining year and a half, we all slept in our room. My ex lived in an apartment that she was told was haunted. It was small above a shop on the Espelaine in Hervey Bay, Queensland. We didn't believe it was haunted, but weird things kept happening. On more than one occasion, I would be woken up in the middle of the night for no reason, and the front door would always be open. Every single time, there was something that looked like the shadow of a child standing upright in the doorway. I thought it was just me seeing this, but when I told my ex and her roommate about it, they went white. They'd been seeing things too, but not a shadow child. They saw a shadow man, and sometimes a shadow cat. As we talked, we could feel the atmosphere of the apartment pressing in on us. We could feel something in the room with us. I thought it was a bunch of horseshit. I don't believe in ghosts or whatever. But the more we spoke, the more afraid we got. So my ex's roommate called up one of her spiritual friends who does cleansings regularly. And he came into the apartment and instantly broke into a sweat. He told us something bad was going to happen now and that we needed to be aware of it. We did a cleansing and casting out ritual. And right at the very end, my ex's roommate CD player switched on and played Bon Jovi's Bad Medicine at full volume. The CD player wasn't plugged in and did not have any batteries in it. The only way we could go turn it off was to take it across the road to the beach and dump it in the ocean. My wife and I bought a house last year and it's been a bit odd, with some minute activity. Strange sounds, whispers, etc. But my wife and I are like lightning rods for it. So whatever. What was especially odd is one of the houses we viewed when we were house hunting. It was a brick fortress, like house surrounded by a black wrought iron fence with a waist height gate. Upon entering the house, it felt very, very uncomfortable, and the air was very dense. The first floor had a living room just inside the door which led to the kitchen. There were a few other rooms, but each room connected to the next, and were maze-like. The house was a Cape Cod, and the second floor was especially strange. 
The floor had a collection of cheap children's gym mats and random carpet pieces and rugs stapled to the wood floor in utter chaos. There were crude paintings of a 1930s Mickey Mouse and elephants, and everything was super creepy. The basement was the worst. The stairs to the basement extended down below the level of dirt under the stairs, literal earth. You couldn't tell how deep back under the stairs went because of the darkness. The ground my wife and our realtor stood on, once off the stairs, was below this dirt floor. So the earth level was about mid chest height. In this weird basement, there were two residential refrigerators and one industrial one. There was also a steel workbench with knives. The basement felt like I was surrounded by a thousand bodiless eyes staring at me. We left and had trouble getting out of that wrought iron fence and of what I now call the serial killer house. I was feeling pretty uneasy, but that easiness was made tenfold when the realtor told us that if we were interested in the house, that they were obligated to inform us that the house had been the place of several murders. I had just moved back to my hometown after attending an art school for two years. The only apartment I could find was a really dumpy loft over a warehouse for $50 a month. This was 1971 way before these kinds of apartments were cool. This was cheap, even for back then. And though I wondered a bit about that, it wasn't totally out of the norm. It did have tall windows and skylights, so it worked great for a studio. Since it was a loft, it was a big wide open space with the bathroom being the only room. There were two other doors, one to the stairs down to the street, and the fire escape door that had one of those fire alarms on it, if you go out of it. The bathroom was like a box cubicle with a shower and a sink and toilet. I had been living there for about a month, when one night I woke up and went to use the bathroom. The door had a small sliding lock on it, and I always lock it out of habit. Just as I was about to leave, I heard heavy footsteps walking up the bathroom door, and I watched in horror as the doorknob turned and rattled, shaking the whole door. It was the first time in my life where I was so scared that I actually felt my body go completely numb. I thought for sure that someone had gotten in, and I was now getting ready to be raped or killed. The lock was a little wimpy thing that honestly a granny could have broken. The doorknob rattled several more times, then something hit the door really hard. I then heard the footsteps walk away and go down the steps. I heard the door to the street open and close, then silence. I think it took me nearly 30 minutes to leave the bathroom and go down. When I finally did turn on every light in the place, and I went to expect the door to the street. There were three locks on that door. Two of them could only be locked from the inside, and they were locked. Nothing could have come or gone in that way. I even checked the fire escape, but it was locked in a similar fashion. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. As it turned out, that was the scariest thing to happen in the loft. After that, I would hear footsteps and the door open and close all the time, and a few other not so scary things. The place convinced me, and quite a few other people, that these things were real. I ended up living there for three years, and would have stayed longer, but the place got sold, and the new owner wanted to move to the loft themselves. They only lived there for two months before moving out. Wimps. I work at a Remax Suburban as the front admin and haven't heard of anything like this, but I was actually house hunting myself and know for a fact 
a house I went to look at was haunted. My husband and I pulled up to the house, and this had to be around the 30th house we went to see. I started feeling sick and nauseous, and didn't want to go in. My husband convinced me to go in, however, because it looked nice on the outside. The house was vacant. It smelt old as soon as you walked in, and there was old antique stuff everywhere. The basement reeked like death, and the second I put my foot down, I almost vomited everywhere and went back to the middle of the stairs. My husband and our realtor were completely fine in the basement looking around. He then convinced me to come look at an old bar down there, so I held my breath. There was a separate room where the washer and the dryer were that I hadn't gone into yet, so they were looking around and out of nowhere a phone starts ringing. Keep in mind this property is vacant. I was following the sound of it, and no phone was ringing upstairs. It was in the room, with the washer and dryer, that none of us had been in yet. I started walking slowly towards the room, and every slow step, the ring got louder and louder, and as soon as I reached the doorway, I realised I had to turn the corner to find the phone. I froze, and I ran upstairs and went out the house. I scared the shit out of my realtor and my husband. As soon as I got back outside, my nausea went away. I know this place was haunted. It didn't help that when we left, the realtor expressed that someone had actually killed themselves in that house only about 10 years ago. Guess that explains it. I grew up in a house that was haunted. We no longer live there, but my parents owned the house for over 15 years. Growing up, we would hear and see a number of things that are most definitely not explained. Here are a few examples. I once heard heavy footsteps walking around my house whilst I was in bed, only to have them stop at my door, and then it went dead silent. Multiple people, unknown to each other, all independently saw a small boy walking in and out of particular bedrooms. Multiple people saw a man wandering the house throughout the years, and my brother actually put his hand through him in fear and in defence after he woke to him watching him sleeping. These are some examples of what we've dealt with. One day, driving home, I noticed an elderly neighbour working her garden, and decided to stop and ask her some questions. Primarily, who lived there before us, and had she heard of anything occurring? She mentioned she'd been in the neighbourhood for over 60 years, but never knew who lived in that house, because it never lasted more than a couple of months. The original owners rented it for a decade, and no one would last. She mentioned... She was surprised my family had been there so long. I never mentioned our outer-worldly guests, but I got the hint that she knew. So yes, these things do happen. People will quickly vacate. The house gave off strange vibes and sat vacant for some five years until someone recently purchased it. I live in North Dakota. This paranormal experience is not one that personally happened to me, but my family. My grandma, grandpa, mother, uncle and aunt. When they were young, long before I was born. Some history about my family. My grandmother is full Native American, so I've always heard warnings about the paranormal from both my mother and my grandmother. I usually brushed it off as silly superstition. Then as I got older, I had a newfound interest in the paranormal. That's when I decided to ask my grandmother if she believed in haunted houses. She slowly looked at me and told me, Oh yes, we used to live in one when your mother was a child. Now my interest peaked. Could you tell me? I asked. She cleared her throat. Well, let me tell you a history of the house first. 
She told me that the house had originally been a parish for the minister and his family. They had conducted funerals in the basement there, since they didn't have a church. Soon, the minister's son started acting strangely, out of character, and they became rebellious. Soon after that, the minister started acting strange as well. He became rude and took up drinking. And that's when my grandmother's father fired him and they moved out. Fast forward quite a few years, my grandfather had received his degree to be a minister. So he, my grandmother, mum, uncle and aunt moved into that very same house. My grandmother said it started with small things such as lights going out or the TVs turning off by themselves, which they chalked up to bad wiring. My grandmother then told me that my aunt, who was the youngest of the three children, started getting sick a lot and acting strange. They still didn't really think it was paranormal or anything. Then one night, when everyone was in bed asleep, my grandmother said the kitchen sink turned on. She said she proceeded to go downstairs to see who was up, but when she got to the bottom of the stairs, it had stopped. Thinking it was her imagination, she went back to bed. Two events caused my grandparents to make the deductions to have the house blessed and move out. When my uncle, the middle child who was five at the time, told my grandmother that he saw a figure of a man standing in the hallway. He thought it was my grandfather, so he got out of bed and followed the figure down the stairs. When he got to the living room, the figure vanished. Then one night, the sink turned on by itself again. My grandmother went downstairs to shut it off, and this time, it was still on as she reached the living room. As she was about to enter, she said she saw her mother, who had passed some time before this, and she told my grandmother not to enter the kitchen, because he was evil. The next day, my grandmother and father went to see her father, who was in the hospital. She told him about everything, and he told them to, one, have the house blessed, and two, take only their belongings and get out of the house. So they went back, had the house blessed and cleansed, and the man who did the cleansing went to the basement. When he came up out of the basement, he was as white as a sheet. Now, mind you, he was full native as well, and he then proceeded to tell my grandparents that an evil entity was there and was after my aunt. He then smudged everyone on the forehead and fought off the evil entity. My grandmother told me that when my aunt was smudged, she turned red, got very hot, and steam started coming off her body, almost as if she were on fire. Then it all stopped. She said there was a shift in the air after that. They stowed only one more night. They loaded up their belongings and left the next day. She said the house had since been torn down and it still gives me the chills to think about it. These types of things have happened to me since I was 13 or so. In just about every house that I've lived, as we moved a lot growing up, the first time I remember anything weird was with my closet. I would shut it at night, but it would be open in the morning. For a week or so, this happened. One night, something woke me up. I had bunk beds in my room and was laying on the bottom bunk, staring in the dark room. First, I noticed the closet was open. Then I noticed a crouched human-like shadow figure at the bedroom door. Like in the doorway. I just panicked. I jumped and pulled on the curtain chain on my ceiling fan, but it was off at the switch next to the door. I ran to the door and flipped the switch. Only now, the light was off still, because I had pulled the chain. I was sobbing at that point. I ran back to the chain, and the light came on that time and there was nothing there. 
I don't think I've ever been so terrified. I convinced myself that it had been my mum's friend staying in our guest house pulling some kind of prank, though no one ever admitted to it. Nothing ever happened again at that house. I would come home from work to find my toilet seat up, and all my curtains open. Opening the curtains was something I never bothered to do at 17 years old, especially since I left for work at 4.30am. It happened every day. At night, I would flush the toilet, and I heard steps walk through the kitchen. My mum agreed to let me take the family dog to live with me, because I was so creeped out. I was sure someone was coming in whilst I was gone. He was aggressive. I would never allow anyone in the house. I came home one time to find the dog had actually torn up the curtains, which is creepy now, but I wrote it off as separation anxiety at the time. Still, the toilet seat was up every day after work, and my dog heard the flushing and footsteps as well. He would bark and growl and stare into the kitchen with his fur standing up. Another apartment, a bell or alarm thing started going off randomly. It was hidden behind ceiling tiles. It even went off after we cut the wires. Still had no idea what the bell went to, and the landlord didn't know. Finally, we tore it out and threw it away. My current house. I've had things move in front of me. My dog barks at corners, and one night, my touch lamp turned on, and still occasionally does, completely independently. Not to mention that someone, who clearly wasn't there, had tried opening my bedroom door in the middle of the night. My door doesn't shut right, and there's no need to turn the knob. You just push and it opens, yet someone was jiggling the knob like it was locked. My husband yelled, come in, thinking it was my sister but no one came. I got up a few minutes later to see what she wanted, and she swore it wasn't her. It follows me everywhere. I'm pretty used to it at this point. As long as there's no scary crouching shadow people, I think it's pretty cool. About five months ago, I got home from work at around 10 p.m. And to enter the living room, you have to walk past the basement stairs. I did so, without actually looking straight down them, but had full vision of them. There was a huge brown head at the bottom of the stairs, opening and closing its mouth. I took about five steps past the stairs before it caught up with me, and then I was scared that it was a person in my basement. I called a friend of mine to come over. She did we didn't find anything there. All the doors were locked and nothing had been moved. A few months after I was watching TV upstairs before work, I heard a noise, like something had been thrown across the room in my basement. I froze for a second, looked around, and saw that all of my pets were in the same room as me. I called my friend again, told her to stay on the line as I checked out the basement. All the doors were locked, nothing was moved, and I've heard that noise, and it sounded like someone was throwing something large and heavy at the wall, about five more times. I still haven't figured out what it was, and I haven't seen the face again, but I always feel someone watching me when I'm in the kitchen at the top of the stairs. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. In a way, I'm jealous of people who experience paranormal events like these. I've always wanted to see a ghost, or for something to happen to me. But as of yet, I have no luck. Hopefully in future. Have any of you ever seen anything that you cannot explain? If so, feel free to share your stories with me. I would certainly love to read them. Just wanted to give you a heads up that my brother over on his history channel just released a new video, and I personally would be really grateful if you could go check out and follow him. I'm sure you'll really enjoy it. I'll leave a link in the description, 
and at the end of the video for your convenience. But anyway, for now guys I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.